back out here live once again where in aquaponics paradise bringing you the heat the flames and the fire today ladies and gentlemen i'm neutral i can't say that i'm pumped today i'm neutral this is how i am most of the time in a balanced mood so i usually get pumped when it's time to do this video but right now i just feel balanced so i can't even fake the funk but that's not to say that during the duration of this video I might pick up the speed. You never know. I kind of feel it itching right now. But right now, I feel smooth. So what we're going to be talking about today is um, we're going to be talking about some of the uh, more commonly used terms for aquaponics. We're going to be breaking down some of the terminology, providing a definition, and then giving you a simple understanding on what some of these terms mean so you can follow along on some of the discussions. And um, it'll help you just get a better understanding on how aquaponics works and you know the terms that are used to describe some of the things in aquaponics so with that being said see i feel it already with that being said let's jump into the first uh definition we're going to first define what aquaponics is all right so let's get into it i got my computer right here we're going to jump into it so aquaponics an integrated system that combines aquaculture and hydroponic techniques and where the majority of nutrients supplied to the plants come from fish waste. Now, this is important for you to understand this because I want you to understand what I'm referring to when I'm talking about aquaponics. I'm talking about feeding high enough amounts to where the majority of the nutrients can concentrate in the water high enough for the plants to use them. That's what I'm referring to. Now, fish feed and the fish waste, they're not gonna supply all the nutrients required for plant development but when you feed at the right or the, uh, in a balanced um, amount they will supply the vast majority of nutrients required um, for plant development with the exception of you know iron calcium potassium and, and in some instances magnesium so that's what i'm referring to when i'm talking about aquaponics when you start adding other things in there adding other uh, external compost teas and all these other hydroponic fertilizers that's not what I'm talking about. You can grow plants that way, but that's not what I'm talking about when I'm re referring to aquaponics. So I wanna make, that, uh, make sure that that's clear. This is what I'm referring to. Now let's move on to the next um, term that we're gonna define. And that is recirculating aquaculture, also known as RAS. And it is defined as a closed loop system that conditions the water for multiple uses using various treatment devices and replaces less than 20 to 25 percent of the water daily now one of the key takeaways from this definition is that the water is reused that's one of the biggest benefits of using a recirculating system and growing fish and plants in a recirculating system is that the water is can be reused it can be conditioned and reused multiple times and this is very important especially in today's time, I say this over and over, in today's time where fresh water is scarce and um, we need to definitely be more conservative in the way that we use water. So this is what allows us to use it um, in a sustainable manner to where it's not having that much of an impact or less of an impact on the environment. Now, in this definition, it says 20 to 50%. And I got this from um, Michael Timmons and James Eberling's book, recirculating aquaculture and this is um that 20 to 50 percent in there is what what they state as recirculating aqua uh, a recirculating aquaculture system which i believe they may have got this from somewhere else but um nonetheless that's not important but when it says 20 to 50 percent that's referring to a fish only system and that's because the water has to be changed at that high of amount because that's kind of high that that has to be changed at that high of a rate because it's a fish only system and the nitrates eventually uh, concentrate to high levels which can then become dangerous to the fish so they have to dilute that by bringing in fresh water on a daily basis aquaponics we know that the nitrate is taken up by the plants so the night uh, the plants balance it out it doesn't allow it to get if you have a system that's balanced it doesn't allow it to get to levels that are going to be harmful to the fish so we're not going to be replacing. We don't need to dilute the nitrate in a system because the plants take care of that for us. So 
we're, we're in a, a recirculating system, an aquaponic recirculating system, we're probably looking at somewhere between 1%, you know, on the low end of the scale and probably no more than about 5%, you know, of daily water change or make up water because you're going to have to make up water somehow, right? Because due to evaporation and the plants are taking up water as well. So this, that, that's going to be more applicable to aquaponics. All right, so let's move on. Let's see what we got for the next definition. We got, or the next term, tank carrying capacity. So this is defined as the maximum fish weight and feed amount a system can support without compromising the fish's health. So whatever system you put together, there's going to be a, uh, a carrying capacity, a maximum load on that system, a maximum amount of fish that you can put in there and a maximum amount of, of feed that can be put in there as well. When you start going up over that, now you start compromising the health of the fish. The, the, uh, the water quality starts to diminish. Oxygen is going to be the first limiting uh, parameter, water quality parameter. That's going to be the first thing that starts to go downhill when you start going past the carrying capacity. Oxygen is taken up by pretty much the, almost all of the organisms that um, uh, uh, live in an aquaponic system. The fish take it up rapidly. They take it up rapidly. Plants, they take it up rapidly. They consume a lot. Bacteria, the vast majority of them that are in there, they're going to be using oxygen for various processes as well. So the more feed you put into a system, this is where the limit, the capacity comes into. The more feed that's put in there is the more oxygen that's going to be required to, to metabolize the feed and stuff like, that, uh, stuff like that in the system. Bacteria are going to re uh, require oxygen for their um, uh, processes that they're involved in. And fish is also going to be uh, required as well for um, consuming food and uh, their metabolism as well. So there's a limit to where you can't go any further without you know, compromising the health of the fish and, um, and uh, diminishing the water quality. That's pretty much what the carrying capacity of the tank is. That's what it's talking about. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Also in there, before we even move on, ammonia is another one. It's another parameter that is gonna be um, could become problematic when you start going over the, ca the carrying capacity of a system. And also carbon dioxide, that's a sneaky one there. Carbon dioxide is another sneaky one from fish and mainly, uh, mainly from fish and, and uh, many of the bacteria. They're gonna be consuming oxygen, which is uh, um, putting a toll on the system. And also they're gonna be letting off carbon dioxide, which can be problematic, you know, depending on the fish species that you had and, and the level that is concentrated in the system. So that's another thing that you wanna keep in mind when we're talking about carrying capacity, but nonetheless, that's what carrying capacity is. All right, so the next thing that we could talk about is the stocking density. Defined as the ratio of fish weight to volume of water. So all the stocking density is referring to is the amount of uh, fish weight you have uh, in relation to the amount of water that the, the fish is raised in. So if we have a gallon of water, and we have half pound of fish, you put them together, you have a half pound per gallon. That's the stocking density. So it's usually expressed in um, pounds per gallon or kilograms per cubic meter. That will usually be how uh, it is expressed. So that's pretty much what it is. Nothing too difficult about that. Pretty basic. So the next thing we could talk about is NFT or nutrient film technique. So this is um, defined as incorporates a thin film of water and nutrients circulating through a channel where the plant roots are contained and can absorb the flowing water and nutrients, right? So basically a channel, which we have here, basically a channel, we have a thin flow of nutrients running along the channel where the plant roots can contact those nutrients. And the reason why it's important to have a thin film of water running through is because you want the part of the nutrients to be in contact with the roots and then you want the other portion of the roots to be in contact with the air it's absorbing oxygen atmospheric oxygen so that's what this is basically uh referring to when we're talking about an nft now i wouldn't be 
upset or I wouldn't even challenge if someone even classified a vertical system as an NFT system. Because it's basically the same thing when you're dealing with a vertical system. All you're doing is taking, pretty much taking this channel here and flipping it upside down. The concepts are pretty much the same. It's still pretty much a thin film running across the roots and the, um, the, the roots still are in contact with atmospheric oxygen. That's where they're getting uh, their oxygen from. So it's pretty much the same thing. So I wouldn't be mad if someone classified it um, under an NFT system. All right, so let's move on to the next one. DWC or the floating raft. DWC stands for deep water culture and is defined as deep water culture. Consists of plants being supported by styrofoam or polystyrene boards on a body of water where the plant roots are continuously submerged in the nutrient solution. So when you're dealing with a, a, a DWC, basically what you're going to have is pretty much a minimum of about a 10 inch depth of water. Um, I mean, you can have less, you can have more. That's pretty much what I would classify it as. I mean, there's no hard rules on it, but when you start going lower, four inches, six inches, I wouldn't classify that as deep water culture. That would be something um, along the terms of what some people uh, refer to as shallow water culture. But I would say a minimum of about 10 inches and the boards, the styrene boards, the polystyrene boards or your styrofoam boards, I would say um, a minimum of about one inch. The thicker the boards are, the more buoyant they're gonna be. So these here, these are an inch and a half boards. So these are gonna be able to hold you know, heavier plants. They're gonna still remain floating on the surface. Whereas if you have heavier plants, you might have plants like these on, you know, thin boards, half inch and all that, then, you know, it might just sink. It might not be able to hold the weight. So that's what we're talking about when we're referring to a DWC, a deep water culture system, or also known as a floating raft system. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. All right, so I'm gonna cut the video right here. I didn't realize that the video was so long. We're about halfway through the terminology and I didn't want to let it keep playing and it's probably going to go out to about 30 minutes. I didn't realize I was yapping that much, man. So I'm going to cut it now and I'll put the, uh, the other half of it up for you guys next week um, and get it edited up. I'm surprised, man. I couldn't believe it. I'm sitting there yapping. I thought it was like a 15 minute video. That thing is like 30 minutes. So I know most people can't, really can't hold their attention. It's raining like crazy out here. But most people can't really hold their attention for that long, for 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna cut it up and uh, I'll put the next uh, portion of it on there next week for you guys. So stay tuned for then, all right? Woo!